everyone you're welcome to solve this nice algebra problem which is 5 over 4 to the power of x minus 4 to the power of minus x this is equal to 10 over 3 so what is the value of x given that x is not equal to 0 so let's provide a solution from here now we have 5 divided by 4 to the power of x minus 4 to the power of minus x this is equal to 10 over 3 the first step to do here is to cross multiply so that now we have 5 multiplying by 3 which is equal to 15 this is equal to 10 multiplying by 4 to the power of x minus 4 to the power of minus x the next step is to divide both signs by 10. So here we have 10. So that we simplify here, we can simplify 15 here by 3, uh, by 5. 15 divided by 5, this is 3. 10 divided by 5, this is equal to 2. So essentially, we have 4 to the power of x minus 4 to the power of minus x. This is equal to 3 over 2. Now, from here, we have that 4 to the power of x, 4 to the power of x, this is the same thing as 4 to the power of 2x divided by 4 to the power of x. Remember, if you apply the indices identity, that is a to the power of n over a to the power of m, this is the same thing as a to the power of n subtract m. So applying this property, then we have, this is the same thing as 2x minus x, which is equal to x. So we can substitute 4 to the power of x with 4 to the power of 2x divided by 4 to the power of x. And this means that here we have 4 to the power of 2x divided by 4 to the power of x subtract 4 to the power of minus x. This is equal to 3 over 2. The next step from here, 4 to the power of minus x, this is in the form of a to the power of minus n, which we can express as 1 over a to the power of n. So let's apply this property. And this means that here we have 4 to the power of 2x divided by 4 to the power of x minus 1 over 4 to the power of x this is equal to 3 over 2 now we have 4 to the power of x is common here so this means that the lcm here is 4 to the power of x 4 to the power of x divided by 4 to the power of x is 1 times 4 to the power of 2x so in the numerator we have 4 to the power of 2x subtract 4 to the power of x divided by 4 to the power of x is 1 times 1. This is 1. Then this is equal to 3 over 2. So the next step from here. Again, we can multiply both signs by 4 to the power of x. And also here we have 4 to the power of x. Now 4 to the power of x here simplifies. So that now we have 4 to the power of 2x subtract 1. This is equal to. 3 over 2 multiplied by 4 to the power of x. The next step is to multiply both signs by 2. Also here, we multiply everything here by 2. So that now 2 and 2 here simplifies. So that now we have 2 into the parentheses 4 to the power of 2x minus 1. This is equal to 3 multiplied by 4 to the power of x. The next step from here, let's open the parentheses here. So we have 2 multiplying by 4 to the power of 2x. Subtract 2 times 1, which is 2. Then this is equal to 3 times 4 to the power of x. The next step is we can let 4 to the power of x be equal to u. Substituting u here, so this means we have 2u squared minus 2 
this is equal to 3 times u, so it is equal to 3u. Let's take 3u on the left-hand side, so that now we have 2u squared minus 3u minus 2, this is equal to 0. Now, this is a quadratic equation of the form a u squared plus b u then plus c, this is equal to 0. From this quadratic equation, a is equal to 2, b is equal to minus 3, and that c is equal to minus 2. When you look at this quadratic equation, we can solve this by factorization method, such that now the product here is equal to 2 times minus 2, which is minus 4, and the sum is equal to minus 3. So we need to identify two factors such that when we add those two factors, when you sum those two factors, we have to get minus 3. When you multiply those two factors, we need to have minus 4. And this implies that here we have the two factors as minus 4 and 1. If we say minus 4 times 1, this is equal to minus 4. Then if we say minus 4 plus 1, this becomes minus 3. So these two factors are minus 4 and 1. So we can substitute this so that we have 2u squared subtract 4u then plus u subtract 2. This is equal to 0. Now, from the first part here, we have that 2u is common. We can factor out 2u so that into the parentheses, here we have u minus 2, then plus, now, the second part here, u minus 2, 1 is common here, so we can factor out 1, so that we have u minus 2, this is equal to 0. So we have u minus 2 is common here, so we have u minus 2, and then we have 2u plus 1, this is equal to 0. So we have two parts here, we have u minus 2, this is equal to 0, and we have 2u plus 1, this is equal to 0. From the first part here, we have that u1 is equal to 2, and the second part here, we have that 2u is equal to plus 1, take it to the right hand side, so this becomes minus 1. So let's divide here by 2, and also here by 2, so that now u2 is equal to minus half. Now, if you recall, if you recall, we are saying that let 4 to the power of x be equal to u. Now, this is what we have seen here. 4 to the power of x be equal to u. So that now, from the first, from u1, we can have 4 to the power of x. This is equal to 2. And on this side, we have that 4 to the power of x, this is equal to minus half. Now, 4 to the power of x, this essentially is supposed to give us a positive value. And you can see on the right hand side, we also have a positive value. So we can proceed to solve for the value of x on this side. But on the other side here, 4 to the power of x, this is actually positive. This is greater or equal to 0. But now on the right hand side here, this is less than 0. So in this case, we'll have undefined result. Undefined result. So in this case, we reject the second part here. So the second part is rejected. So we proceed with 4 to the power of x. This is equal to 2. And this implies that here, 4 can be expressed as 2 to the power of 2. So here we have 2 to the power of 2 raised to the power of x. This is equal to 2. Remember, 2 is raised to the power of 1. 2 to the power of 2 to the power of x. This is in the form of a to the power of n raised to the power of m. This can be expressed as a to the power of n times m. Applying this exponent property, we have 2 to the power of 2x. This is equal to 2 to the power of 1. Since the bases are common, that is a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m. Since the pieces are common, exponent n is equal to m. 
and this means that here we have that 2x is equal to 1. So if we divide both sides by 2, then we have that x is equal to half. We have x is equal to half. The next step from here is to verify that this value of x satisfies the equation. So let's verify from here. Now, if you recall, if you recall, we have that 5 divided by 4 to the power of x subtract 4 to the power of minus x. This is supposed to give us a value of 10 over 3. Now let's substitute the value of x here, which is half, so that we have 5 divided by 4 to the power of half minus 4 to the power of minus half. This is supposed to give us a value of 10 over 3. We can express 4 as 2 to the power of 2. Substituting this, then we have 5 divided by, this is 2 to the power of 2, then multiplying by half, subtract 4 to the power of, no, remember this is minus half, this is supposed to give us a value of 10 over 3. So 2 and 2 here simplifies, so that now we have 5 over, this is 2 minus, remember this is also 2, to the power of 2, then raised to the power of minus a half. So 2 and 2 here simplifies. Remember, this is supposed to give us a value of 10 over 3. So essentially, here we have 5 divided by. Now we have 2 minus 2 to the power of minus 1, which is the same as a half. This should give us a value of 10 over 3. So we have. 2, if you say 2 minus a half here, remember 2 is our number, so this is over 1. LCM is 2, 2 divided by 1 is 2 times 2, this is 4. Subtract 2 divided by 2 is 1 times 1, which is 1. So we have here, this is the same thing as 3 over 2. So essentially, we have 5 divided by 3 over 2. This is supposed to give us a value of 10 over 2. 3. So it's clear that here we have 5 multiplied by 2 over 3. This is supposed to give us a value of 10 over 3. So this means that 5 times 2, this is equal to 10 divided by 3, which is equal to 10 over 3. So it's clear that the left add side is equal to the right add side. And therefore, we can conclude that the value of x here, which essentially is equal to half, satisfies the equation. So kindly follow the steps, like this video, and kindly subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.